Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and in this Lightroom tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to take a simple shot that was shot over a blown out background and turn it into a really cool looking shot that looks like it was shot over a kind of a backlit white seamless backdrop. Now to do this, I've loaded up a new image into our catalog, and you guys can download this exercise file from this actual article itself. Just visit the article on srlounge.com. Um, and what we're going to do now is load up this image. I'm going to double click on it. We're going to hit D to take us in the develop module. I'm going to hit uh, F twice to go full screen, and then five, F5, F6, and 7 to kill all my panels except for my develop panel on the right side. Now one of the points that I always try and get across to photographers is that post-production is just as much a part of the artistic process as pre-production, as shooting itself. I know photographers tend to look at post-production as, ugh, you know, I gotta sit down in front of the computer, it's a huge burden to sit there and edit images. But don't think of it that way. Think of it as a chance to be able to further express your creativity and kind of express yourself in your images. Uh, in fact, you know, so many of the cool images that we see in Hollywood, in magazines, and on posters, those are primarily created in post-production. Now, that isn't to say that they're not shot amazingly well at a camera, and it's not to say that I believe that every single thing that we shoot should be taken and photoshopped. It's, it means that we should shoot it as close as possible, or as close as what we can uh, get it to, the final product, in camera, but that understanding the post-production process will help us in a lot of situations where we may not have all the necessary tools, um, especially if you are a journalist or a wedding photographer or an event photographer where you're shooting basically spur of the moment, you might not always have uh, a chance to set up a backdrop or a chance to set up the perfect lighting. But understanding what you can do in post-production uh, post will help you to shoot it correctly in camera and tend to achieve the final effect in post-production. And so that's what you see here, basically. This image was shot with the final look in mind uh, as when it was shot in camera. It was meant to be shot basically as a portrait over a backlit, uh, a high key backlit background. So here's how it was shot. I'm going to hit I twice to pull up the information. And one of the key things to note that when you're shooting an image like this, you need to raise your aperture. Um, if your aperture is wide open at 1.4, 1.2, or 2.0, or even 2.8, uh, you get too much bleed from the light. The light basically f uh, comes from the background and bleeds around your subject too much and you don't have definitive lines and so when you start brightening it up and getting it correct, uh, getting the exposure correct, you notice that you lose too much of your subject. So that's why this uh, image was actually shot at f5.6. We had to raise the ISO to get it, uh, it sufficiently bright and then we shot at 1 200th of a shutter to make sure it was sharp. All right, so let's get started with this image. By first, I'm going to remove the information by hitting I again. Uh, I'm going to brighten up the image. So let's go to brightness, and we're going to pull it up. And I'm really looking for kind of getting her skin tones right. And right about here, I kind of noticed that it's about bright enough, but I don't see enough contrast. And so the next thing I want to do is adjust my blacks just so I can actually get some contrast back in her skin. And I think right about 18, 19, 18 is, is around where I want it, and I'm going to adjust the rest up with the contrast because I don't want to add too much blacks. If I add too much blacks, it's going to really kill those shadows. So I'm going to kind of add the rest of my contrast with just the contrast slider. Next thing I'm going to do is actually turn up the temperature a little bit. I want to warm it up just so her skin tone is a little bit more, give some life to that skin. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit, I think around 4800. This is a kind of personal preference, so bring it up to where you kind of like it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of recovery. Now you'll notice that recovery is going to pull back some of this background garbage, but I'm going to teach you guys how to clean that up in a second. What I want the recovery for is to kind of even out some of the tone on our skin. Next thing I'm going to do is raise clarity a little bit. And what we're going to do with clarity is you'll notice that if I take clarity up too high, especially on an image like this where we have her over a bright background, you're going to start seeing those black halo effect around the outside of her, uh, of her skin. I don't want that effect, but what I do want is I want a soft line that kind of outlines her so it's not too kind of fuzzy. You'll notice if I pull clarity down, the the light bleeds over her skin way too far, and so that's what I want to avoid. So I want to kind of pull it up to maybe plus 30, I think. Around that's around, it's about right. We don't see any halo effect, and we've kind of defined her edge a little bit better. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go down to our sharpness. And I'm going to zoom in just to check it out. And you'll notice that because this image was shot not only at a high ISO, but it was also very heavily backlit, we have a lot of light coming directly in the lens, it's not very sharp. And so we need to do a little bit of sharpening and kind of detail enhancement. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to increase sharpening to about 60. And we'll kind of fine tweak this in a second, fine tune in a second. 
I'm going to raise the detail to about 40 and radius to about 1.5. And now we're going to play with the noise reduction to kind of smooth out the skin. So we're going to go up to plus 20 and then maybe plus, let's go to plus 30. And what I'm going to do is just reduce my sharpening just a little bit. Um, and what I kind of, I think what I want to do is uh, keep the amount relatively high, just reduce the radius and the amount of detail a little bit. And so I don't need to remove the noise completely. Having a little bit in there is fine. I want to keep uh, most of that image detail. I just want to re get rid of kind of the, the not so pleasant noise in the image. And I think that's just about right. Now let's do our little uh, Lightroom magic and let's get rid of all this garbage in the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my adjustment brush. And this is one of my favorite little kind of tricks to getting rid of uh, high key kind of background garbage on, on the high key images. What I'm going to do is take my adjustment brush and I'm going to switch it to exposure. You guys can hit alt and reset it if you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But what we're going to do is just take exposure and brightness all the way up to uh, their maximum setting. So plus 4 and plus 200. And then we're simply going to paint over the garbage. And so what we're doing, and also I have my feather at 100%, flow 100, and density at 100, and I'm kind of adjusting the size just so I don't cover any of my actual, oops, I clicked the top panel. I'm adjusting the size just so I don't accidentally cover anything I don't want covered. So when I get kind of close to her body, I'm, I'm adjusting that size down. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to get rid of all this junk in the scene. And then what I'll probably do is just hit my, uh, I'm going to hit my O button to bring up my overlay, just so I can see where this is actually painting. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of get it closer to the skin, just so if there's, if there's any other possible garbage in this shot that might show up, it's kind of going to be removed as I, as I pull this stuff out. All right, so now I'm going to hit O again. We're going to get back to our image that we just created. You can see all the garbage has been removed from the scene. And now I have just a nice shot over a high key background. And this is what we started with. And this is what we're ending with. So you can see that basically by understanding the post-production process, understanding what we can do just in Lightroom alone helped us in being able to know, OK, we don't have the backdrop. We don't have the lighting necessary to create this perfectly in camera but we can do it very easily in post-production if I shoot it a certain way. What I also like to do on these kind of images is I'm going to create uh, another version. I'm going to bring my left panel back and we're going to create a little snapshot. We'll call this the uh, we'll call this high key color. And the other thing I want to do is create a black and white version of this. So I'm going to hit V and then I'm going to whenever we turn something into black and white we always have to kind of adjust our brightness and our blacks a little bit so I can kind of add a little bit more blacks, add a little more contrast and then uh, so I'm, I brought my blacks up to 25, brightness to 86, and contrast to 80, and that's great. I like it where it is. I'm going to hit plus again, and this is going to be high key black and white. All right, guys, so now I have a great looking black and white, a great looking color image, and we did it all from this ordinary raw file right in Lightroom.